And welcome everyone to another Smart Money Circle show. I'm Adam Sarhan. With me today is David Lee, who's the founder and CEO of Iveda, which is ticker symbol IVDA. They do a lot of interesting things. So David, without further ado, welcome to the Smart Money Circle. And I look forward to hearing all about you and your company. Yeah, awesome. Thanks for having me, Adam. So David, I always like to begin. Can you tell us a little about your journey and how you got to where you are today, please? Yes, uh, the journey to some, uh, to me, it was it was quite long, but lots of learning along the way. I founded the company back in 2003. You know, I think it's the uh, uh, good old fashioned uh, startup story. I was working for full time at a telecom. And uh, prior to that was a major wireless company back in San Jose, California. But that's in the early 2000s, literally 2000, 2001. I got laid off, Adam and uh, found a new job just to make sure I can pay the bills. And during that job was when, you know, you can call it the grandiose idea, but it was really moonlighting with some customers, a, a security company customers of mine that just asked for my help on some, on some concepts of remote monitoring of video. This is segue into the, how the company got started here. 20 years ago, we were one of the first companies you you using very staid technology, you know, Logitech webcams. It wasn't anything as fancy as we know today. But I did something for security industry where we allowed a security guard from one city to monitor live video, watch literally, from another city. And before we send off a security guard, there was real-time video verification in 2003. So remember, this is early. Today, it seems like second second nature, but back then, that's when uh, Iveda was founded on a notion of remote video monitoring. I love it. Fast so, forward fast yeah, forward to now. Please, yeah. Fast forward to now. We are one of the world's fastest and most advanced AI vision platform in the world. That's uh, short of it for you. I love it. So tell us, you saw a niche, you, getting laid off turned into a positive. I love that and security. So tell us a little about the company and some of your competitive advantages, please. Wonderful. Iveda today is a um, AI software vision company. We're experts in IP video technology, video surveillance. We host in the cloud, but the evolution over the past 20 years has really been um, leveraging the big data that we were kind of obligated to manage, handle, and distribute to now mining that data in a way. You know, in 2015, we called it data mining. Right. 2018, it was machine learning, leveraging all the data we had. Today, it's called AI. But we were in AI for some time, you know, due to uh, uh, our own obligations to improve our operation, improve human efficiency, because the human eyeballs cannot monitor and watch all this live video and, and pretend that we capture everything. So we as a company, to, to assure that our customer got the best service and our team supplied the best possible uh, application, we had to come up with technology. So today, Iveda is, is known for its IoT sensors out in the field collecting data. And today we even recognize and, and call an IP camera an optical sensor, right? Because there's no need to watch anymore when you're working with proper technology. So we are an AI video uh, vision platform company today. I love that. And I know that you have a tremendous amount of growth from an earnings standpoint coming up in the future. Can you speak to a little bit to investors and to the audience about how things are looking going forward? Maybe your TAM, oh, total addressable market, anywhere you want to go. Sure, sure. You know, just just being around for, for as long as Iveda has, uh, we've really had the opportunity to, to feel out the industry understand our multiple verticals. You know, when people talk about, are you selling to schools, David? Are you selling to factories, David? Who are you selling to, David? The good news is that the technology was designed to leverage existing infrastructure. So it, layman's is if you've got a camera, doesn't matter if you're a flower shop or, or the United States military, if you've got an accessible camera, our technology could be applied instantaneously. No need to buy new equipment. And because of that, Adam, this is how we scale our growth. And just like any good company, early days, you started out knocking on doors on your own, installing everything on your own, writing your own POs. But 
at the end of the day, the Aveda business model and what allowed us to scale is that we invested in building a reseller distribution channel. We've got to be able to mobilize a stronger team than even us. That means more sales, more marketing, more support, more backend. And those are the, the partners that we've garnered over the past decade, um, trained, uh, infused, and integrated with our technology to build applicable products and applications that make sense, sellable to their market uh, and, and, and demographics. So long story short, our scaling is well planned. You know, they say overnight success in 20 years, right? But during that time, you know, mobilizing a large multi-billion dollar corporation requires a lot of effort, a lot of behind the scenes certification, proof of concepts that, uh, that not a lot account for. But at the end of the day, that's where our success is coming from. It's, it's well planned, well orchestrated. And now it's just finally reaching that trajectory that, most companies love to talk about, but there's a lot of work that people don't see. So I'm happy to share with you now that we have a global mobilization happening. My team itself, our team, you know, speak in real terms. It took a lot of work. You know, one thing's build a company, another is to have the best people at your company. So speaking the truth, that's been a big hurdle that both we had to find market share, had to find partners, and we had to continue building the strength of our team here at, here at Iveda. So that's why it's all coming together. I love it. And your growth, you expect to go, earnings are growing. So going forward, love the story. Let's talk about risk. David, how do you handle risk? And what are some mistakes you see people make with res respect to risk management, please? I believe taking technology, um, uh, here, I'm going to do reverse here. Some would say that you push technology out too quick, right? And then you learn from that lessons where you trip and fall flat in your face. What we've learned is, and we're doing it different now, we're launching, we're deploying, and we're selling quicker than ever because I, I made that mistake. I was the perfect engineer. It had to be done right. It's got to be ready. And Adam, I think it's the oldest uh, uh, thing in the book is that if you keep trying to perfect something, someone else is going to go ahead and make that sale before you. Um, and, and openly speaking to all entrepreneurs and, and, and mature CEOs, we all know what we're talking about. We sit and we think that we're the best stuff, right? Great. That's not happening. When, <laughs> when we think we're the best and we're building the, the next best thing, someone else is already generating revenue. Boy, did we learn. So we turned that around about 2015 and we're hawking out a lot of wonderful technology and the good news is we're learning with our partners and our customers, and people are more than willing to do so with you. You've got to stay sincere, stay innovative, and keep the energy high to run fast. And that's what we're doing right now. That what, that's what makes our AI tech work so well is that we're getting immediate feedback to how to adjust it. And AI is all about learning. So get out into the field, start learning, and, and delivering the best tech possible. I, I love it. And the proof is where the pudding. I mean, your revenues are grown by double digits every single year and, and super, super great hands off hats off to you. I mean, great, great job. So thank you, sir. David, next question for you. Let's talk about some timeless lessons you've learned along the way that you want to share with the audience anywhere you want to go. Well, um, I think this many can relate to, you know, I as a technology company, I, I don't want to, you know, be. It's cliche to talk, oh, I've learned from this early launch of technology and technology evolves so fast. I'll leave that. We all know how quick technology evolves and how fast we have to adapt as the service provider or the technology developer. But I'll speak to something that's, that's closer to heart to me even more recently. To scale a quality company, technology is one thing, but it's not the most important thing. Your customers, very important. Don't get me wrong, you know, but I've learned over the years till this day, you got to build that culture. Man, it's tough, you know, for any great company. You want to truly succeed. You want to really take care of your customer and you want to really deliver the best technology out there and do it well. You got to look back 
to the self and your own people. Training. Build the right attitude and mindset within the culture. And you know what? Technology flies. And that's, I'm keeping it very short there because that's a, a fact to true success. That you feel so that. So powerful, David. I love that. How about the other side, the mistakes? What are some timeless mistakes you've learned along the way that you'd like to share with the audience and how do you avoid them? Well, the, the mistakes, again, um, I, I, there's many, I wouldn't call technology development shortfalls or delays mistakes because that's just a fact of, of any quality company. But the mistakes comes in as a true leader I'll tell you the mistakes of the decisions that we learn to make much later in life. I wish that I would make quicker decisions earlier, earlier as a younger CEO. As a younger CEO, I was always afraid of making that gut call because I had to verify. I was never certain of a lot of decisions that needed to be made. And then, yes, you check with your advisors, you get advice, and you learn from people who have taken that walk. But at the end of the day, my first biggest mistake was to not listen to my own gut. Heck, who started the company? You did. Who learned how all this worked? Yes. You did. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and guys, that's what whoever's listening here, my fellow, my fellow peers. Right. I was scared to make my own call. You know, so man, that was my biggest mistake, Adam, is, is not believing and following my gut 100%. And there's a time in this company, you want to talk when people change and revenue increase is when I start following my gut, you know, and, and I, I, yes, listen to your advisors, learn from, from everybody's past mistakes, but every person and company experience and opportunity is unique. And you've got to remember you yourself are unique. So make that unique decision. And if you, if, and if it sucks, excuse my language, don't do it again. Right. You learn from that, right? It's the oldest rule in the book, but yet I failed to follow that. I was afraid to make that mistake. I, it's so powerful. It's almost as if you learn from it. The question becomes is it actually a mistake. Maybe it's not a mistake. At yes. That, did you learn? That's really exactly. Great. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about leadership. <laughs> As the CEO and your leader, what are some, and you've been a leader for a while, what makes a great leader and what are some lessons that you want to share with the audience with respect to being, you know, a great leader? <laughs> I I smile because you're asking this as such a, a timely uh, moment. It ne You never stop learning. I guess the, the greatest um, uh, lesson that I've learned is Again, it's it's cliche, but man, never stop learning. Listen more. And for me, I have I've learned that I have to practice a lot of patience. We are the drivers of our revenue. We are responsible for our shareholder value. So at times our heads run. All we want to do is run. So what I've learned and the biggest advice I can share now is not slow down. Don't ever slow down, okay? But make sure that you understand and build a culture that is fast and is pacing with you because it's not your people's problem. It's your problem. And that's what I've learned. You know, so to this day, that is one of the biggest, um, I say, uh, learning experience of, of continuing to be a great leader is you hear a lot of old sayings, you hear and read a lot of things, but until you experience it and it affects your revenue and you make certain changes and you see that revenue fly, it's not the technology, Adam. Technology is pretty cool, man. I mean, it's, it's awesome. But how do you sell more of it? build the right culture. I love it. I absolutely love it. All right. Uh, uh, let's talk about adversity. What are some, how do you handle adversity and what are some obstacles that you've had to overcome along the way? Especially in the space that we're working in right now, artificial intelligence. For us, we're, we face a lot of misconception and I'm sure you've seen it just in the past two years, a lot in our media of uh, there's always two sides to every story. 
but I'm, I'm a technologist. I believe in, in artificial intelligence. I believe in our ability to manage technology. And, and just like anything, anybody can have misuse of anything, even a butter knife. So when it comes to AI, one of our biggest, um, uh, I would say, dilemmas that we face is having to just address our public in general, customers, um, partners, because when they run into questions, concerns, and, and uh, 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 you know, it, dilemmas in the field, we have to educate. We have to educate what is the misconception, why it's a misconception, but then also very clearly illustrate how the technology works, why it's valuable, right? And, and how, how different every certain conversation can be, even if one talks AI, because AI is not the same across the board. AI is a technology. How you leverage that technology is what's been very difficult for us. We're good at it, believe me, but it's been very difficult to convey and educate clearly to the mass public, Adam. That's been really the, uh, the hardship here for us. I, I absolutely love it. I think that communication is one of the most important things anyone can even do, even ask any married couple or anybody that's in a relationship with anybody. So yeah. uh, the final question for you, David, what's the best piece of advice you'd like to give the audience or uh, give your 30-year-old self? Wow. And thank you for calling me my 30-year-old. <laughs> um, I would say uh, stick to it. You know, when when it comes to, uh, you know, what's the old saying? You, once you start something, finish it. And in my own journey with Iveda, when you believe what a specific application, product, or technology can do or provide for the world, and you can make it happen with your own two hands and your little team from the start, you, the biggest piece of advice is you need to stick to that messaging. Like I say, listen to your advisors, hear all the noise that's around you because you'll always be surrounded by a lot of wonderful noise. Our jobs is to filter that noise, stay focused and keep moving forward. Again, I would tell this to my son, my daughters, any kid out of high school, but as my peers, you all should agree. If not, I'm going to say it. There's nothing really special, but sticking to it because you're going to have a lot of people that tell you it's difficult. It's not possible. You'll never have enough money. There's always an obstacle, always. But if you just stick to it, take the step, follow through, you're going to get a bite. And that's what we're doing. And that's how revenue is growing, you know, any, everywhere in the world. Absolutely love it. Well, David, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. The website is IVEDA.com. The ticker symbol again is IVDA. And hopefully David will have you on again soon. This was absolutely fantastic. I would love to. It was fun. Thank you, Adam.